On February 20th, 2023, I was invited to an exclusive private press dinner at Chef Guo, a recently opened upscale restaurant that serves Chinese cuisine in an imperial fine dining setting. It's the most expensive Chinese restaurant in NYC, offering a 19-course tasty menu at $518 per person. The dinner was set to begin at 6 p.m., but you can always rely on NYC Metro to be unreliable. So, after a series of track delay, fire, reroute, and cancellation, I ended up 30 minutes late. All the other diners were already there and the dinner began. So I wasted no time joining the crowd. The dining room featured an old-fashioned Chinese-style table with eight seats. The dinerware was made with fa lang cai, aka familiar hus, a type of traditional Chinese porcelain introduced in the 18th century and defined by overglazed enamel. It's also a designated dinnerware of choice for China's state dinner. There was a menu with the chef's handwriting, although I had to admit it was a bit hard to read. The room also featured all the private collections from the chef, including a replica of Bian Zhong, an ancient Chinese instrument developed during Zhou Dynasty, dating back roughly 3,000 years, a replica of Ding, an ancient cooking vessel, some more porcelains, and this writing from Zhu Rongji, a former premier of People's Republic of China, among other things. The first course was just tea, so I took a sip and quickly moved on. The second course was a small platter of four cold side dishes, containing fermented soybeans, bitter melon, pear, and crispy salted fish. It was meant to provide different flavor profiles of sweet, bitter, salty, and umami. Then I joined others with a third course, which was again a cold platter. This was not a salad, and there is an entire category of dishes dedicated to these visually beautiful creations. The ingredients here contain sausage, cured meat, egg roll with seaweed, shrimp, broccoli, and pickle vegetables. Everything on this plate was edible, including the butterfly, which was made with rice paper. It tasted as good as it looked. Okay, so now we have this course that is tofu and caviar. This is a tofu, this is a piece of like a chip and some caviar on top. I'm gonna pick this and eat it first. Oh, no, tofu is quite tender, and the sauce has got like a scallion and silvery flavor, different greens inside. It's a mild, herbaceous sauce. I like this little decorations on top, meaning it's fortune. Yeah. Pomegranate seeds. All right, so next up we have this called Lin Dan Shou Guo, which translates as magic elixir and fruit of longevity. Well, I have to give them that this is a good translation. So this is basically like an egg shell with fruit inside. Let's see. Oh, this is chilled. You really like nailed it. Ooh, almost like a puree jelly thing. Mm. Mm, peach puree. Mildly sweet and refreshing. <laughs> All right, so here we have some oolong tea. <laughs> Finally, moving on to our second stage, we have this dish called Guo Se Tian Xiang. It's in Chinese, which is to describe the beauty of peony flower. And this is in our presentation, so it's actually a very good name. This flower is made with grouper, and there is sweet rice and pomegranate sauce on top, on the bottom. Oh, that's a beautiful cut of fish. Mm -hmm. It's very tender. Almost like a, a super tender version of fish cake. It's like a little bit gelatinous and plump. Mm. The sauce is sweet rice and dragon fruit. I'm trying to give it one more taste. Yeah, a little bit of a dragon fruit flavor. But dragon fruit isn't the strongest fruit, so the flavor is pretty mild. While I'm waiting for the next course, I'm gonna pour myself some tea. Mm. 
Yeah, okay, next up we have this pan fried fragua with truffle sauce and this beautiful presentation of I don't know what is. Let me give it a try. This thing looks like a cage. Oh, these are definitely custom made vessels for this. I'm gonna drag this for a perfect bite, like this. Mm. And that is just a perfect piece of ragwa. Sear to perfection. Crispy on the outside, creamy inside. And on top, this little thing is pork floss, but it's also kind of crispy. So it's like a savory, crispy bite with a sweet blueberry. All right, and this is truffle sauce. Mm. Mm. This thing, this beautiful thing. Oh. Mm. It's like a crispy, slightly toffee flavor infused milk bar. Mm. Okay, so next up we have a lobster tail here with uh, mustard sauce and this is ya cai, it's like a Chinese vegetable. I actually I use this to cook at home all the time. But anyways, you have this beautiful plate made of marble and it rotates. Like a mini rotating thing. That is very elegant. Anyways. Oh, it's quite firm. Firmer than Juju lobster tails. Oh, it's pretty firm. And this sauce is um, almost tastes like a little bit like wasabi. It's pretty mild. This little roll thing with rice in it. Yes. Yeah. Back when I was like working in Fida, it was like top of the There's purple rice in there. You have a natural mild sweetness in here. These are beautiful presentations. Next one, we have this beautiful box. And inside, we have this dish called Baba Fu Dai, which is 100 happiness and 8 treasures in a pouch bag. So you have this, uh, probably can't see it, but voila. This is the pouch bag. The bag is made with eggs, and inside there are eight different ingredients, hence a treasure, baba, which is like a classic Chinese cooking ingredient combination thing. And this is a black garlic. This is a beautiful box. And by the way, inside there, there are like hundred ways of writing the character of food. It's pretty dark here, but anyway, here's the food. Mm. Ooh. Oh, I can see uh, hands, maybe saltus. Oh wow, that is so good. Definitely ham, mushroom, bamboo shoots, green peas, savory, very umami. Oh, that is beautiful. All right, so this is the black garlic. So this fermented black garlic is not as strong. It has a mild garlicky flavor, and the texture is almost like jelly. It's very soft. Okay, so next up we have this marinated sea bass for eight hours, and on top we have fried thin noodle called long shi, which is dragon's mustache. Anyways, this one looks very pretty as well. And uh, let's try the fish first. Oh, okay. It is very tender. And the skin is slightly fried, has some firmness to it. Mmm. Slightly sweet, sour, crispy from the surface. The flavor profile is lychee. Lychee is also a very classic flavor profile. So slightly sweet, slightly sour, but not as strong as you're having like, for example, general hot chicken, if you will, or the other dishes. We call this xiao li zhi. Mm, so good. Incredibly tender inside. Fry noodles. This is the chopstick work operation. Mm, very crispy. Tastes like the dragon mustache you have on dessert, but this one's a bit more savory. Beautiful. All right, next up we have this A5 Wagyu with apple fries. And this container thing was made with rice paper. So it's like chunks, small cubes of Wagyu beef pouring out from the basket. That Wagyu is so soft. Incredibly tender, almost melting your mouth. Yeah, fattiness of it. Apple fries here. Tastes like French fries, but you got the apple sweetness, right? Not as crunchy because it's apple. 
this wagyu beef though. That is incredibly tender. Okay, let's try this basket that's made with rice paper. <laughs> Mm. Oh. Oh. You hear that, right? That is crispy. Oh, beautiful. Oh, that incense. Mm. That smells amazing. Okay, so this one we have stone smoked duck breast, and it has this incense flavor coming through. Feels very zen. What is this? Uh, let me see. What is this about? Is there a fried onion? This is the piece of duck breast here. Mmm. Well, wow. it's extremely aromatic, and you have that slight smokiness in it. And that's incredibly good. Good flavor. Mm. Also, the breast is almost a little crispy. Okay, so next up here we have braised moro with double mushrooms. So this is moro and this is the mushroom cap. This is possibly another mushroom, pork floss, potato crisp. Mm. Oh, this mushroom is real meaty. But you can get ingredients like this at home. But this is not something you can get. This is more raw mushroom. Just look at the size of it. This is the cap. Mm. The depth of flavor is on another level for this mushroom. It's so much more intense and complex, at the same time being umami. This one. Mm. I think this is a cane mushroom, Xinbaogu. Also very meaty. Pork floss and potato crisp. All right, next up, this is exciting. This is a black lion head. So lion head is basically like a pork meatball, but that is stewed under low heat, so it's very tender. This one is black because first, it's covered with black squid ink. And second, this uses a breed called black pork. And as I know, this is a rare breed that's like native to Sichuan province, has a lot of good flavors, but that one has very limited production and it was almost eaten into extinction. I haven't even got a chance to eat this type of breed in China, but I got it here. There is also a salted egg yolk inside. Right, let me cut this apart actually, since this is a more firm version. Yeah, fried definitely. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's also why, because the egg yolk inside is pretty solid. Just look at this. Oh, there's so much flavor in there. And also because you have the salted egg yolk, sometimes I can't even distinguish which is which because the flavor just fused together. The meat is a little firmer than the usual lion head. has a chew to it, but it has a very intense flavor. Mm. And also from the sauce, you can taste a bit of the flavor of the pork fat. Mm. That is good. Okay, finally, I have our carb. This is jiajiang mian, so literally means fry sauce, but it's usually made with fermented black beans sometimes pork. So this is the sauce. The difference is that you have black truffle shaving at the top. So noodle time. This is clearly a chopstick operation. I smell the fragrance from the jiajiang. All right, finally, I'm getting a shot of myself. Mm, mm that flavor is good. You have that slightly fermented funky flavor from the black beans, which is a signature from Jiajiang, and also some pork, a small slice of truffle. Mm. The truffle adds like a little bit of flavor, not the strongest, because Jiajiang itself is quite strong. Before the last few desserts, this is the transitional tea, last tea. tea, um, it's typically fermented. Okay, so this is the oolong tea. It's like the... Well, wow, it's so nutty just from smelling it. Oh, I love this tea. It's so nutty. Also, the tea is a little thicker. It almost has like a, a, a coating on your tongue almost. Oh, yeah. I'm not a tea expert, but I like this tea. Okay, so the last dish, we have something special. This is a tricolor sea swallow. 
This is a sea swallow. It is a creature that lives under 4,000 meters below the sea. So, like, I have looked it up. Like, so this is a sea swallow. It looks pretty ethereal. I don't know. I don't even know what to name it. It's like a, almost like a sea snail that dances or whatnot. But anyways, this is sea swallow. That's the ingredient. Mostly for texture, not much flavor, I was told. And there are three types of sauce to add to it. This is papaya, and we have kiwi and Greek yogurt. All right, let's do one by one. That is certainly very unique. Okay, I'm just like a jelly type of thing. Mm, almost like jelly. Tastes like a tender version of jellyfish. Not as crispy, more tender. Yes. Right, this is the kiwi mixture. I, I want this tea, like, <laughs> <laughs> that sauce, the fusion. The kiwi is like slightly acidic and very refreshing. And plus this uh, slightly mild sweetness from papaya. That two combinations is quite good. And you have that jelly-like texture. Lastly, this is Greek yogurt. Okay, let's do this, lastly. Mm. Oh. Very soothing. Well, I just ate another type of animal I have never had before. That's cool. So the last dish here, we have this orange in a swing basket. Orange and apple. Small little pieces. Mm. Palate cleanser. Refreshing. Not very sour. You got a small apple pieces at the bottom. That concluded the meal. And this was the entire dining experience at Chef Guo. The food overall was delicate and delicious, and it's not just some interpretation of Western technique with Chinese ingredients. I appreciated the chef's effort to promote Chinese cuisine and culture through a more refined lens. There can still be some improvements, and the final path to success might be a long and arduous one. I truly wish him success. This is Fuski. Like and subscribe for more videos about food and travel, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.